Hello Kerbal Knots and welcome to part two of the docking tutorial. Gemini 7 is loaded up with Tom C. Kerman and he's ready to meet old Jebediah. So you've seen the launch before, I'll join you in orbit. Well, quick change of plans. Welcome to the launch pad. Tom C's ready to go, but the first and foremost thing that I do is I set the Gemini 6 as my target. That way when I fire, I keep my inclination the exact same. So now for reals, I'll see you in orbit. All right, guys, welcome to orbit. There's Tom C ready to go. Uh, as you can see, my orbit is a 92 by an 85. Um, because I'm behind Gemini 6, I will be going faster to catch up to him. It's important to remember that when you're orbiting the same direction as your target, if you need to catch up to it, you need to orbit lower. So here we go. Our next step is to get on plane. We have our ascending and descending nodes there. And uh, ideally that should be zero and mine is 0.4. Now in a small orbit like this, 0.4 may not matter, but for docking it's best to make sure that your inclination is right at zero. So any uh, delta V change that you do, you will hit it. There's not a chance of going above or below. So what we're going to do is fast forward to the descending node, which means our orbit drops below the spacecraft. So I'm pointed north, right on the horizon. And uh, we go to normal time. And then I burn just a little bit to get that uh, descent or the ascending and descending node down to zero. Now when it does, just like the pair apps and apple apps, it goes to the opposite sides of the planet. And that means we are on inclination. So now with maneuver nodes, you can, um, whether you're below, you can add delta V, or whether you're orbiting higher, you can take away delta V. But uh, just sort of spin around and see when would be the best point to fire. That would get me 84 kilometers in, and that's not good enough. We're looking for less than a kilometer. So as I move it around the orbit, you can see the maneuver node, or the um, intersect points changing. That's no good. And so I, I burn to the left a bit, and then that brings me down and brings those arrows closer together. I'm like, haha. So then I fire a little later, and that gets me to 2.7 kilometers. Now we're cooking with gas. Oh, wait. That's the wrong way, so add a little bit more delta V. There's 3.1, and adjust my direction. That's 4.2, so I go the other way, and that gets me to a half a kilometer. Now that I can deal with. So if I can pull this off, I'll be point five kilometers away so I'll see you then all right I pulled it off added a little bit of RCS and now I'm going to intersect it at 200 meters which is really really awesome so looking at my target it's 6.2 kilometers away I'll change the camera to chase which basically if you put the camera behind the capsule when you put when you pitch up it will really pitch up so I'm coming at the target. Make sure that the target is selected above your nav ball there. It says I'm approaching it at 106 meters a second. Now at that speed, I'm just going to go fly on by. So what I have to do is I have to slow myself down right when I get to it. So as I rotate around, you see I'm going to be burning my engine towards it, which will in turn slow me down. That's the retrograde marker that you see right at the top of the nav ball. And then the pink uh, try, the one, two, three spots. That means I'm pointed away from my target, which is good because I need to slow down. So there's a thousand meters and then I burn. You can see my target relative target speed going down. I want that to get to zero. There's 7.5, little bit of thrust to get it down. And there's 0.4. I'm still going towards it, but only at half a meter a second. So now while I'm still going towards it, the prograde marker is the direction I'm going. And then relative to my target marker, I'm going to shoot below it and to the left. Well, we can't have that now, can we? So what I'll do is I'll fire and then just a little bit of thrust. And now you can see that my prograde lines up with my target, which means I'm heading directly towards it, which is what we want at 4.1 meters a second. Now this is going to take a little bit. Um, it's best to do this slow and steady. 
And we've got the sun at our back, which will make docking easy so we can see our target. But once I get closer, I'll come back. So we'll see you then. All right, guys, 100 meters out. And what I'm going to do is now that I'm uh, 100 meters out, I'm going to use my RCS um, firing behind me to slow down to next to zero. So there's 0.4 meters again. And then using my bracket key, I change to the other spacecraft and set its port as my target. So that will allow Jebediah to rotate his spacecraft first the wrong way. Get right on target there, Jebediah. And now you see that his uh, nav ball looks exactly like mine. So our, noise, our noses are pointed directly towards one another and we are approaching at 0.4 meters a second. So it's important to keep your prograde marker right above that circle, the pink circle, and uh, if you change craft, be sure to set your target to that port. You see that reflects in our nav ball down there, and we are going at 0.3 meters a second. Now at this point, I don't want to thrust up because that's a safe speed, but uh, what I will do is do a little bit of time acceleration to get it in close. Now as that time acceleration kicks in, you can see my prograde marker slipping off of the pink marker. So what you do is you use translation with the RCS, that's your J, K, L, and I keys, and then you basically just steer it. And it keeps the ship pointed where it needs to be, but it slides the, air, the spacecraft in that direction. So much like navigating with the nav ball with the WASD keys for pitch, yaw, and roll, you just use it for translation to keep the yellow marker right on the pink marker. So a little bit more time acceleration. It's now 25 meters out and I'm slipping a little bit more north or uh, I'm going to fly above it. So a little eye to pitch down on the translation to line the markers up again. Now less than 20 meters out and as that port gets closer that prograde marker is really going to uh, to slip around more. It's a more pronounced movement because the port is so close. But it's important to, uh, to keep that target selected and come in at a nice slow rate so if you do start slipping you can catch it. Now as I rotate you can see the yellow marker really jump around and just sort of keep it in the middle if it, if it jumps around on you just sort of average it out because it means you're right on top of your target. 10 meters out now still nose to nose and I'm slipping a little bit to the right. A little bit left translation, a little pitch up maybe. And it's important that once you're lined up, keep your nose right on that pink and let magnetism do the work. So now at 5.8 meters, they bounce off of one another, but there we go. Make sure that your SAS is disabled on both spacecraft so the magnets can pull them together. But there we go. We have a dock spacecraft. You can see Jebediah and Tomsey there on the same spacecraft. And as promised, Jebediah gets to go on EVA. He's holding on to that ladder, we'll let go and engage our rocket pack. The Kerbal orientates to the camera, so he'll, his feet will be at the bottom of the screen, and there we go. Using the WASD, you can move around, shift increases your relative altitude and control, drops it uh, down. But there's Jebediah against Kerbin. And now, Jebediah, you've had your fun, you've only used up 3% of your pack, it's important to, to watch your pack fuel. But just slowly navigate back to the ladder. He'll grab on and board. Now in most docking, you would uh, bring both Kerbals back together in one pod, or you can bring them back in a separate mission. But what I'm going to do is transfer my fuel all into one of these engines. So I'll put it in Jebediah's using Alt-Click, and that sucks all the fuel out of Tomsey's uh, fuel cell. And now that all the fuel is in Jebediah's, I'll keep the uh, pods docked, but then decouple his fuel cell. Just like that. Now we are one spacecraft with one engine, and we shall do our maneuver node to get back home. So looking for Africa, it would be right behind us. You've seen this before, just like coming home, set you up a maneuver node and aim for the ocean a little bit long because uh, the atmosphere will slow us down. But once we start our maneuver, I'll come back with you then. 
So, guys, hang on to your punties. We're going home. Okay, there's our, uh, our, our segment that we decoupled, floating 1.6 kilometers uh, away from us and picking up speed. We have our maneuver node set, and we're 30 seconds away from our burn point. So we're going to fire the engine and take a nice look at Kerbin. I fired it full throttle just for a moment so I can see exactly what my burn time is. So now that I have an official burn time, I'll take a look at my charge to make sure I can orientate and fire. Now we slow down, the camera pans down to say, hey, you guys are uh, plumbing to the planet, don't you know? And our fuel, uh, our fuel pod just keeps on going. We'll uh, destroy that once we get home. But there we go, we're all set to come home. So what we'll do is we'll go at, we will uh, decouple our fuel cell and just coast in with our, with our pods. Going time acceleration here because our, uh, our parachutes aren't open. Using physical time acceleration now that we're in orbit. And we're passing over the continent heading towards the Kerbal Space Center. It's good we're going to land over land. We're going to pass over that mountain range there just west of the Kerbal Space Center. You can see the Kerbal Space Center beach coming into view there at the, uh, at the end there. And now we get our re-entry effects with both pods. <laughs> In a real world, these pods would be destroyed. This thing is taking it broadside. But abusing Kerbal Space Program's lack of re-entry effects will, will bring them both in together. Now I came up with this uh, maneuver uh, completely by mistake testing this out. I didn't know if this would actually work, but what you do is once you're, oh geez, that nav ball, that glare, I hope they fix that. That way you can do more in cockpit maneuver because it's right on the center. You can't really see where you're going. But now that we're in the atmosphere, we go ahead and fire our parachutes and then decouple. So both, both pods fly around. Maybe just get a little sick in there, but that's what the uh, interns are for over there at the Kerbal Space Program to clean up the, uh, the astronaut vomit. <laughs> so both pods are coming down now together. And the wonderful thing is, is you can still switch uh, between the craft because they are so close together. So coming down now, we'll, we're just letting uh, our parachutes and gravity do the work and there's a nice look at the mountain range, and there's Jebediah's view. Yep, your parachutes are open, buddy. You're good to go. Let's see what Tomsey sees. Oh, there goes our RCS fuel tanks. Where is the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. Well, those were our RCS fuel tanks, but our parachutes clipping together, forming one big jellyfish-looking thing. 600 meters above the surface and we'll be home. Tomsey seems excited. He's a part of the first Kerbal docking mission. There's Jebediah. And he's just taking a gander, making sure his... Uh, I think he's a little disappointed his parachute's open. He wanted a, uh, a more dramatic EVA exit and flying on over to Tomsey's capsule and climbing in just in the nick of time, as is the Jebediah way. But there they go, like... Two jellyfish caps dropping us to the surface of, of Kerbin. The Kerbal Space Center is over there behind us somewhere. Just a short walk away. Won't be much to recover us. But there's our shadows. Will Jebediah win the race to the ground? Uh, it, nope, it looks like they touched down together. Well, Jebediah, go congratulate your teammate over there. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, he hadn't got his space legs yet. Come on, Jebediah. Go over to the window and say hi. I don't know what Jebediah sounds like, but I'm sure he would be uh, screaming at his partner, we did it, we did it, and I didn't, oh, he fell down. Well, <laughs> space is a cruel mistress to the, to the untrained, but maybe Jebediah is just putting on a show for us. So we'll get out Tomsey, and we'll pose for a picture as the first successful docking and landing, together in fact and turn towards the camera 
Yeah, that's a nice view with the mountain range behind. Jebediah get in frame. And next time we will be establishing a free return trajectory.